Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. For the last couple of years, we've been following in the footsteps of Herbert Evans, who wrote this wonderful book, Highways and Byways in Oxford and the Cotswolds, in 1905. And you find us today in this extraordinary valley, just near Chedworth, where there is a Roman villa that has to be seen to be believed. We're going to show you around. I know we don't normally deal with ancient history, but on this occasion we simply couldn't leave it alone. It belongs to the National Trust. They've been very kind to let us in to film. Some of you will remember that we've seen a little bit of this place before. When, you, when we showed you the Chedworth Village piece some while back. But we're looking at it in more detail on this occasion. Come with me and we'll show you around. Like so many of the greatest discoveries of our age, Chedworth Roman Villa was stumbled upon by accident. Writing just 40 years after the event, our trusted guide, Herbert Evans, who as many of you will already know, traveled this area and wrote his book, The Highways and Byways of Oxford and the Cotswolds, in 1905, described the lucky events that led to the discovery as follows. Forty years ago, you would have seen nothing of the extensive remains which have now been revealed. You might have walked through the undisturbed woodland, little suspecting that the country house of a wealthy Roman or Romanized Briton lay beneath your feet. But a little matter sometimes kindles a great fire. It happened one day that a gamekeeper of the local Earl of Eldon had lost a ferret. As he was searching for the animal, he turned up a number of dice-like objects, which at once struck his attention. On examination, they turned out to be Roman tesserae, and the clue thus given, being followed up, led to the discovery of the remains we have now come to see. This piece of excellent good fortune was followed up by another. It so happened that Lord Eldon's uncle was an archaeologist called James Farrer, and it took him, with the help of a team of estate workers, just one summer to uncover the amazing Chedworth Villa. He felled the wood, cleared the debris, and carefully excavated the walls and mosaics of what is one of the largest Roman villas in Britain. The Romans invaded Britain in 43 AD. For many years beforehand, they'd had a trading relationship with the islands, but Britain was fragmented into tribal regions and had no central government. The Roman Emperor Claudius who had come unexpectedly to power in Rome, needed a prestigious and public success to cement his position, particularly with the army, who were skeptical of this untried emperor, who was slightly deaf and lacked natural charisma. We aren't quite sure where the invasion landed, but it seems it carried a substantial force of some 40,000 men. It took a while, perhaps 40 years in all, for the Romans to take at least titular control of Britain, but take control they did, introducing a whole raft of civilizing influences, including building roads, aqueducts, beautifully laid out towns and cities, and a system of administration that brought order to the wild island country off the north coast of Gaul. The Dubani tribe, who were in our region, don't appear to have taken too strong a stance against the invaders. In fact, they seem to have cooperated pretty quickly, and they played a great part in the development of Corinium, one of the most important centers of the Roman world, now known as Sarancester. Of course, they developed agriculture, a vital and substantial source of wealth, and they built large farms and villas to live in, one of which was ours in Chedworth. 
After the 1864 excavations of Chedworth, some of the mosaics discovered were left for visitors to view, and many were reburied to protect them from the elements. At the same time, a lodge was built to house a museum in which all finds of pottery, jewellery and other artefacts were displayed. In 1924, the villa was transferred to the National Trust, in whose care it has been ever since, and who have continued to preserve the priceless remains and to improve the experience of the visitors. This transfer of ownership was achieved by one of the more unsung heroes of this story, one Wellbore Sinclair Badley, who was an amateur archaeologist and justice of the peace living in Painswick, he raised enough money to buy the site from the estate and then donated it to the trust. After such an achievement, and perhaps with some justification, by the time of the 1939 England and Wales Register, he is for the first time officially described as an archaeologist. Of course, the villa's star attraction is its mosaics. In the grand dining room, now covered by a specially designed air-conditioned building, and protected for our pleasure, is a depiction of the god of wine, Bacchus, and his lover, Ariadne, along with fluted bowls with jeweled rims overflowing with acanthus leaves. Perhaps this image confirms the agricultural purpose of this settlement, but it was certainly built to impress. There are four cupids representing the four seasons each depicted holding seasonal articles and wearing seasonal clothes. The hall was designed to be viewed by the diners as they ate and drank at the other end of the room, and to demonstrate the wealth and standing of their host. Mosaics of this quality were extremely expensive. The Trust's archaeologists Martin Papworth and Nancy Grace, working in 2010, on excavating the floors of the west range of the villa, uncovered another mosaic floor running the whole length of the building, some 30 metres. It is the longest corridor of its type in the whole of Britain. It was, of course, recorded in detail and then covered up again for its protection. Perhaps one day it will be economical to provide the same protective covering as the dining room and our grandchildren might get a chance to see this extraordinary relic. But it is the most recently discovered mosaic at Chedworth that has thrown a spanner in the works of our widely accepted view of post-Roman Britain. It has always been thought that as soon as the Romans left in 410 AD, that Britain returned almost at once to subsistence farming and pre-Roman simplicity, heralding what we have described as the Dark Ages. This view was compounded by the fact that there are virtually no written records of the time. However, the mosaic at Chedworth has been carbon dated and proven without doubt to have been made in the mid-5th century, showing that far from discarding the Roman ways, the wealthier members of the community continued to live in Roman style and trades such as mosaic laying continued well after the Romans left. A whole new history of the Dark Ages is now being researched, which may well give a new perspective on our historical background. The extraordinary quality of life in this villa nearly 2,000 years ago can also be seen in the remnants of the baths, in which, if you were lucky enough to be invited, you would experience hot and cold water to open and cleanse the pores, scented oils, massages, cuttings and clippings, all the luxuries of a 21st century spa, as well as in the overall heating system. It was all powered by an underfloor hot air system called a hypocaust. The villa had a furnace that would heat the air the floor was raised above the ground by pillars so that hot air could circulate under it. The floor then consisted of a layer of tiles, followed by a layer of concrete, then another layer of tiles or mosaic. There were also tile or clay flues under the walls, 
which circulated the hot air to the rooms above. The hot air would eventually escape from the roof. Even the walls had ceramic tiles in them to maintain the heat. They had to make sure that the hot air and smoke didn't leak from the floor and walls, which was quite a feat of engineering considering the materials available to them. Because it's worth noting that a leaking floor would be extremely hazardous and could cause carbon monoxide poisoning, the dangers of which they would certainly have been aware, even if not quite clear why. Chedworth also boasted a flushing loo. Once again, a communal experience. The loo had a long bench seat with several holes in it, and the resulting effluent was collected as fertilizer. Oddly, Chedworth's loo is next to the kitchen, which slightly begs the question as to how the great grand guests reached it. Surely not through the hot and busy kitchen, which they would never really expect to see. An unsolved mystery. All this running water was supplied by the spring at the top of the valley, which was treated with all the respect it deserved. A nymphaeum was built above the pond into which the spring flowed, a shrine to the female spirits of nature who were relied upon to continue to provide life-giving water. None of the wonderful luxuries of this amazing place could have worked without it. There is much more to see at Chedworth, and of course the wonderful experience of wandering in the footsteps of our Roman or Romano-British predecessors and imagining what their life in this valley must have been like 2,000 years ago. It's a treat that we, without hesitation, are extremely happy to recommend. Please come and enjoy it. I hope you've enjoyed this look in detail at this astonishing relic of the Roman Empire. We've really enjoyed ourselves, I have to say. It's been fascinating. I've learned an enormous amount and we've enjoyed being here. The National Trust have been very kind. Um, and please do come and visit this place. It's quite remarkable. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can find us on all the normal platforms and you'll find us again back in the Cotswolds in the very near future.